And these little piggies went to the Piranha Pool. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, the JLA's Aquaman. The son of a lighthouse keeper and Atlantean queen, Arthur curries the bridge between the surface world and his tumultuous realm of the sea. Monarch of the undersea realm of Atlantis and king of the seven seas, Aquaman is one of the most powerful DC superheroes, commanding a kingdom that covers three quarters of the Earth's surface, including all the creatures contained within. Arthur Curry came from humble beginnings, as most of his life was spent exiled from his home, unaware of his noble origins. When he finally took the throne as adult, he became the most legendary king in Atlantean history. You know, it's a real shame for Arthur that amputate starts with A. Just before we get a close look, though, at the JLA hook hand Aquaman, the tape measure is going to tell us that the figure stands about six and three quarters of an inch in height, or Aquaman is going to stand at 17 and a half centimeters tall. As for other figures with Aquaman, here's first what the figure looks like with the very first figure of four from the Plastic Man build a figure wave. This was the blue energy Superman. We have, of course, gotten a couple of other Aquamans in recent memories. The ones that come to my mind right now are the one we got from the Endless Winter Wave, which is actually a slightly bigger build of Aquaman than the one that we're getting here with the hook hand. We also as well got one from the Page Punchers line. Wasn't as big of a fan of that one. The scales on his chest look a little out of place, and he had a big shoulder pad on the side of his body. We also have a classic version of Aquaman, which up to this point with my own hands, I haven't had the chance to pick up that one yet. Yeah, so before we chit-chat on why Arthur lost his hand in the first place... Why don't we give him a hand by looking at the accessories that got packed along with him? First, at least, that the figure comes include the trading card. Second, at least, unlike Energy Superman, at least it looks like a card that belongs to this particular character, that they didn't simply just randomly select any old image of Aquaman. Well, at least the front delivers. Unfortunately, the back sort of under-delivers by just giving us a very generic paragraph read. In fact, it's probably a little bit more than a paragraph. Just a very simple story, an origin story of how Arthur Curry came about to being Aquaman. I feel like there should have been at least some mention. This is a pivotal moment in Arthur's life, whether it's been retconned or not. I think that some of it at least should have been mentioned on the back of the card. So, of course, it's me. I'll provide all the necessary 411 to that. But at least from the front of it, it's a nice-looking Arthur Curry card. The figure also comes included with a display stand. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this. What? Okay. Psst. It's got the DC logo branded, printed, branded down below. And then off to that, it's got a little cornering peg that plugs into either one of Curry's boots. Done with that? Done with that. Okay, move it off to the side. The figure also comes included with both arms for the Plastic Man. Of course, we were building Plastic Man through this whole time. Now, unfortunately about this, though, is that we only have gotten ourselves a torso. And the torso does, wasn't going to go anywhere. It didn't have legs. It didn't have arms. certainly didn't have a head to see where it was going. We have a, a torso, at least, for Energy Superman. And then, of course, we got the two arms. I don't think I'm going to add the arms just yet. There's a black suit Batman that's going to come part of this wave that's also going to come with some silly spaghetti arms for, for Plastic Man. And I don't know how easy it's going to be to remove these arms. So I'm going to leave them off for at least right now until we get to the review of Batman. Promise, I'm going to promise on that. Before we get to the Batman and then before I decide from there which arms I'm going to use for Plastic Man. I'm sure the fact that we get two variations of arms means that these arms would be pretty easy to remove. But just based on that, and with my luck that I've had in the past trying to remove arms without having to heat them up in the first place, I'm just going to leave them off. I'm going to leave them off. Promsies. I'm gonna, we're going to come back to it. We're going to come back to it. Getting, though, a closer look at Aquaman. Now, obviously, one of the big notable things about this particular character right now is the fact he does have the missing arm. Depending on when you follow the exploits of, of Arthur Curry Aquaman in the comics, whether it be in, like, the mid-90s or so, or probably the biggest canon thing about this version of Aquaman with the hook is the original Justice League cartoon. Aquaman, granted, was introduced in the cartoon with both hands, but though through, the unfortunately, that one episode, he had to take the hand off. Which I mentioned at the beginning of this review. How do you spell amputate? It's with an A. Depending on the canon on which you'd like to follow for Aquaman losing his hand. In the cartoon, though, he actually gets strapped to like a, like a cliff face that gets zapped with a laser. And him and his baby child are also kind of falling down on the rock face down into the lava below. He frees, though, one of his arms, which happens to be this one here because he's chained to both, both sides of the, the rock with it. But he can't, unfortunately, remove his arm on this side, which was really strange because he was able to use the strength at least to break his arm off one side, but he didn't have the strength of both arms. Writing, I know that's a plot story, but uh, with, with not having apparently the strength of both arms to rip away the chain, he, uh, he ended up having to take, of all things, his little belt buckle A. 
uh, spelling amputate with an A. I'm here all day. He took that and he ended up having, he first tried to break the chain. He couldn't get it all the way through. So he had to do the next thing and we cut away to see what the end result was. He had to end up having to cut his arm right off, or at least a, the hand right off. Depending on if that's your canon, the other alternate story of why Aquaman lost his hand actually was in the comics. I think it's Cherbidus. Cherbidus uh, was actually getting Arthur Curry to show him how he could harness Arthur's ability to communicate with the sea. And Arthur basically stuck his hand into a pirate, uh, piranha infested pool. And then the piranhas basically ate away at his hand. So there's a couple of different stories. I mean, obviously the cartoon is a little lighter. Cartoon is a little bit more of a self-sacrifice. So I think it's a little bit more of a better story of why Arthur lost his hand than maybe in the comics. Either way, though, at the end of it, the short end of all of it is the fact that Arthur had to lose his hand. And what we get instead is a hook hand. The hand itself, or what the hook is at least, is a pretty soft enough plastic that at least I don't worry that that's, the plastic is going to break on this. I do like at least the way they painted this in gold. There's a few little indentations to it, so it looks like it's not like a, a clean made hook. It looks like it's been hand forged. As for the actual head sculpt, I really think that this one's done really well. The only thing I'm not as crazy about, though, is the color they chose for the blonde. Now, the color that he has for his blonde, for at least his hair, I think is a little bit more of that dirtier yellow. Unfortunately, though, I think it's I think it's upped too much of an ante when it comes to the brightness of what they've gone with the yellow here for his beard. If comparing it, for example, to let's bring in maybe like the uh, the Endless Winter version of Aquaman. Comparing though the two, um, I think like this Aquaman has probably the better looking blonde, at least on the front of his face. Granted, though, his face was way too pale. I even mentioned that in the review of him. But of course, that gives us more classic looking Aquaman of a very much similar style of build, too, when you're looking at the two. Just one as a little bit more of a classic looking Aquaman. And then of course, one is the one that they wanted to make Aquaman a little bit more, a little more of a tough guy in the 90s. So they gave him instead of like this shoulder armor piece. But the hook looks really good on the character. It's not one, unfortunately, it's not, a, it's not a trait that lasts very long in the comics, at least. But at least for the 90s, I mean, we had a lot of even video games and merchandise circulating around that time. And Aquaman always kind of appeared with the hook hand. The, but again, like the head sculpt looks good. I think it's generally well painted. The only thing I'm not as crazy about is how bright they made the, the beard, the, the blonde in the beard. I think it's just way too yellow. Other than that, though, I think that it's a, one of the better looking long haired Aquaman that we've gotten with really only the only, only other example that we've gotten was also as well the uh, the page punchers, which was, again, an OK head sculpt for Aquaman. Yeah, a little much more rosier in the cheeks there also, but I think it's of the bearded Aquaman and the longer haired Aquaman. This is the better, the best one that we've gotten so far. The paint is generally handled well here. I mean, of course, the shoulder part armor that he has here is kind of more of like a, a very dark black. It even it isn't even really black. It's almost got like a slight bit of brown to it. The gold also that they've done here for the belt areas matches pretty close, in fact, to his to his uh, his hook here. And again, that's been pretty generally well painted. There's a few little areas when you're looking at the green, for example. Now, he's got the, these green stripes down the sides of his legs that only have. This is the only area that really has any sort of suggested idea of scales. That's painted fairly well here. Although, just getting to the top area of the belt, there's a little bit where you can see it's bled on the, on, on the underneath. My guess is that they probably painted the belt first, and then that when they painted up the uh, the green, the green sort of has just unfortunately bled onto the gold. So it's a little bit of a paint problem. But I mean, if you're looking at it from the front, you would really never even notice it. Even if you were looking at it from the side, you probably wouldn't even spot it either unless I pointed it out to you. You got the, again, you got the pr printed on scales. So they look decently. You got the little fins there on the backs of his legs. The figure all in all look, looks really good. I think it's one of those characters that you're likely going to be picking up like Energy Superman, even if you really have no plans at all to build Plastic Man, just because like this might be your Aquaman that you grew up with. Again, whether it be the Justice League cartoon, whether it be the comics when he lost his hand in that. Either way, though, like it's it's one of the more notable things about Aquaman before he jumps ship, literally, over to being the classic look with the orange top and, again, the green pants down below. Now, for his articulation... It's going to be a little bit more limited just because he's got the longer hair on the back. Although not limited enough where, like, even to just to rotate the head around it is not really where you're going to have the struggle. You're probably going to have more of a struggle if you try to tilt the head up. As you tilt this up, you can kind of almost even feel like the plastic on the back of his hair starts to separate from the back of his forehead. Would that be the back head? I guess because that's the forehead, that would be the back head. Either way, it looks like it does separate when you're trying to lift the head up. That's the only hindrance that the articulation gives you. The head look, granted, looks down a lot easier. And, of course, you can also move it back and forth as well. Aquaman's arms do rotate on both sides. You can bring those arms out at 90 degrees. No problems there. The figure does have a swivel in the bicep, a double hinge on the elbow. And I would normally have said hands, although in this case he only has one hand. This hand rotates all the way around. It hinges also as well back and forth. This hook hand, though, does have rotation too. So 
If you didn't like it, I mean, it, like if, for example, you wanted to have the hook facing the opposite way, you could do that. You could just turn this around. I mean, I, I probably would end up having the hook anyways up this way. So it's like the, the curved part is the part that's facing upwards, but you could rotate it if you want to. Upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. The lower abdomen area is also on a ball joint. Legs do split out. No problems there at all. You can take the legs, move them forward, move them back. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. And again, you've got your articulation where it counts in the ankle. So you can rock it back and forth this way. And the figure does have always appreciate the fact they have toe articulation on them. All in all, though, it's one of those figures where I really, even though we have gotten count, I mean, what, five Aquaman, five Aquaman. I think we've gotten a couple of other variations. Uh, I know, of, of course, in fact, we did get the page puncher, so I want to bring him in. I guess I really only have like the long haired Aquaman, which is somewhat ironic. Again, we've got the endless winter Aquaman and the page punchers booked in on either side of him. I think really of the two, at least of the long haired variety. The one that we get here with the hook hand is probably the best painted Aquaman. With that being said, though, even though I think the face is the best of the three, I think things like the problems with the coloring of the yellow. It's a little jarring, I feel, when you're looking at the face for Aquaman. I think it's just way too yellow, though, on the beard. Too bright. I think they need to, you know, just, just tone that down a bit. But the rest of the body looks good. And again, this is the only time, the only instance, we've gotten ourselves a hook hand Aquaman. And it looks really good, I have to admit. I do think it's funny what exposure we get to certain characters depending on what age we are. Aquaman I really knew very little of as a kid, only just the stuff on the surface. Any appearances like he would have in the Challenge of the Superfans. He was always like that hero that if there was ever a water mission, you would always really rely on Arthur Curry. He was the guy that was talking to fishes. He was the one that was riding around on giant seahorses. And of course, I had a superpowers Aquaman, but that was really about it. In fact, the real time I was hooked in by this character, no pun intended, was actually when I was really heavily into collecting comics in the 90s. By then, I had branched out from just simply collecting Batman and Superman comics well into collecting Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and Arthur Curry's Aquaman. And by that point, the character had already had his hook hand. In fact, I still have that issue where Aquaman loses his hand and eventually adopts the hook. By this point, too... Uh, merchandise really picked up, it seemed as well, for DC characters, and that this version of Aquaman then would appear in the Total Justice action figure line and a subsequent video game as well, to which I really very vividly remember renting frequently at Blockbuster Video. Even though, again, it's a look that now looking back on it, people don't tend to remember as much. When you t tend to say Aquaman, people think right away of the scaly orange shirt and the green tights. But at one point, Arthur Curry was a tough guy. He obviously, he's still a tough guy. Don't get me wrong. But at one point, they really wanted to sell this guy as not just the guy that was swam underwater and talked to fish, but this was a guy that you could really th think was a potential threat. A hook in his hand, a guy ready to go with long hair and a big long beard, which I think from a figure standpoint translates really well with what we got here from McFarlane's release. Granted, with the hook hand, we're probably not going to get many other appearances of this particular character, but I think for what we get here in this release, it's well painted, and it looks a lot like the Aquaman I remember from the 90s. The paint generally, for the most part, is pretty handled well. I mean, the only thing I would still say is like the coloring to the beard is maybe a little too bright of a yellow, but all in all, though, from, from top to bottom, from hand to hook, it's one of the best Aquaman we've gotten. It just all happens to be an Aquaman from the 90s. What do you think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Is this also the time that you got introduced to Aquaman? Whether it be through the comics, whether it be through the Justice League cartoon, do you very vividly remember this version and this look of Aquaman? Let me know down below. If you guys, though, in the meantime, did enjoy this video, want to throw it a like. If you guys love this content and want to certainly stick around, because we are now down two characters from potentially a four. We are still going to be looking at the Jon Stewart, and we're also going to be looking at the all-black Batman. And with those two figure reviews, of course, we're going to be continuing our build of Plastic Man, and definitely looking forward to doing that. And of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.